five into the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. Runke back to pass. Flux throws. Looks for Simpson. Caught into the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. Jamar Simpson. Welcome back to Bearcat Update, where we cover the sports that you love. I'm your host, Jason Holland, and today we'll be covering football and volleyball, and then we'll sit down with cross-country star Elena Tibbold, and then I'll take on women's basketball. Before we get into action, make sure to take a second and subscribe to KNWT TV on YouTube. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified the second that we post new content. On Sunday, the Bearcats matched up against the Nebraska Kearney Lopers and struggled through a defensive battle that ended 0-0. Goalkeeper Lily Ellis napped her 15th career shutout as the Lopers gained no traction. That tie moved them to 3-4-3 on the season and 0-2-1 in MIAA action. The Bearcats attempted 13 shots with 6 on goal, but were unable to score. Junior forward Adele Gore attempted 3 shots with 2 on goal. On Friday, the Bearcats brought it back to Bearcat pitch to face off against Emporia State. The Hornets entered the game with an identical record to the Bearcats. It was a hot start as the offenses got going early, but after adjustments were made, the defenses stepped up. In the first 30 minutes, the game's four goals took place. Just 13 minutes into the game, the Bearcats fell behind and it looked like the same old story. But junior Ashton Page would fire right back on an unassisted goal ending the Bearcats' five-game scoring drought. Shortly after, it would be the leg of Adele Gore that would give the Bearcats their first lead. Our reporter Anthony Martinez caught the highlights. Take it away, Anthony. The Northwest women's soccer team was set to take on Emporia State at Bearcat Pitch in a very windy Friday afternoon. The Bearcats always look to come out strong, no matter who the opponent is, but Emporia State was up to that challenge. In the first five minutes, as they were the ones to get on the score sheet first, taking advantage of an error from the Bearcats to make it 1-0. The Bearcats looked to bounce back almost immediately, trying to equalize the game, but Emporia's back line was not making it easy for them. Applying the pressure on Emporia, getting chance after chance on goal, they couldn't get the ball in the back of the net. As the game was moving along, the Bearcats were finally settling in and getting their attacking groove back. The Bearcats were finally looking to break through and get on the score sheet. Off the corner kick clearance from an Emporia defender, it fell right to Ashton Dane, who scores an absolute banger for the Bearcats as the game is finally level 1-1. The Bearcats really needed that goal in order to get back into this game. This would only set us up for an entertaining rest of the first half. Emporia did end up taking the lead again a few minutes after Northwest equalizer, which led to this game getting really physical. But a beautiful cross from Ashton Dane, who has been heavily involved in this game, sets it up perfectly to Adele Gore, who scores with a flying header and ties the game up to make it 2-2. She definitely felt the after effects on that one as she collided with the keeper, but she still got the goal at the end, so I don't think she is very worried about how she feels. Her teammates were there to help her up, and they head to the other side of the field to get ready to try to take the lead in this very fast-paced game versus Emporia. It was a stale start to start the second half, but the physicality between the two teams was still there. The two teams were chaining shots after shots, trying to get the lead in the second half, but none were going to the back of the net. The tensions were getting higher as the game winding down and the score still being 2-2. Unfortunately, this is how the game ended. The Bearcats split a tie with Emporia. I'll be kicking it back to Jason, our host. What an offensive afternoon from the Bearcats. But that didn't stop goalkeeper Lily Ellis from adding another 10 saves to her career total. We're going to take a quick break. Stick around after this commercial to catch more sports news. We'll be covering the redemption victory against Central Oklahoma in the week's action in volleyball. All right, that was good, y'all. It's in the breakdown set. Hey, welcome to Nerd Central. Your one-stop shop for anything movies, TV shows, and even the latest celebrity news. From the newest releases and even your local film festival. We will have it all right here. We're here to uncover the Easter eggs that you might have missed and even the secret plot lines that you might not have picked up on. Right here, we'll uncover the mysteries on Nerd Central. Launching Wednesdays at 6 on KNWT TV. On this week's episode of Channel 8 News, we look at a career pathing event.
Welcome back to Bearcat Update. With last week's loss to Central Missouri, it marked the first time that the Bearcats exited week five with a losing record since the 1994 season. That 94 season was the first for legendary coach Mel Cheertsma. That season, the Bearcats would go winless. Just five years later, they posted a perfect 15-0 season and were crowned champions. On Saturday, the Bearcats looked to ride that ship, and they did just that, nabbing a 34-21 victory against the Central Oklahoma Broncos. After starting the season with a record of 2-3, the Bearcats needed someone to step up. And they got that when sophomore running back Jay Harris continued his hot streak of 100-yard games to start the season. Harris rushed for 274 yards and four touchdowns on just 22 carries. His 274 yards was tied for the fifth most in Bearcat history. Make sure you drop a like if you think Harris will continue his streak of 100-yard games in next week's game against Missouri Western. Despite the fact that the Broncos were ranked in the top 10 nationwide rushing, it didn't take long for them to abandon that play style and move to the air. Our reporter Caleb Allen caught the action from the sidelines. Take it away, Caleb. This week, Northwest Missouri State took on Central Oklahoma at home. Northwest Missouri State has had a rough start to the season, starting off two and three. Playing at home was a big boost for Northwest as they hoped to advance to three and three. The story of this game was Jay Harris, sophomore running back who rushed for 274 yards and four touchdowns in leading the Northwest Missouri State University football team to a 34 and 21 victory. Jay Harris tied for the fifth highest single game rushing total in program history as he carried the ball 22 times for 274 yards and four touchdowns. Harris scored on plays of 15, 64, 45, and 44 yards. Harris' four rushing touchdowns tied for the third most by a Bearcat behind a pair of five touchdown efforts by Xavier Amon in 2007. Harris extended his consecutive 100-yard rushing game to six straight in Saturday's win. Overall, the Bearcats' offense rushed for 324 yards on 36 carries, and they threw for 154 yards to account for 478 yards for a total offense on Saturday. Not only did Northwest's offense succeed, but their defense was outstanding. UCO's running back Trayvon came into the game ranked number 9 in the nation for rushing yards with 535 on the season. But this game was a different story. Trayvon was limited to 32 rushing yards on 13 carries. The Bearcats' defense forced three turnovers. Northwest had three sacks and six tackles for a loss in the victory. Northwest will now be on the road next week as they take on Missouri Western in a big rivalry game. All eyes will now be on Jay Harris to see if he can continue his streak of 100-yard rushing. This is Caleb Allen, signing off. It was a much needed bounce back for the Bearcats as they moved to a 3-3 record on the season. I'm sure it's the same for y'all, but we are hoping that this is the jump start that the Bearcats need to tackle the end of the season. Additionally, the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame announced that former Northwest offensive lineman Seth Wong will be entering its pantheon of greatest players on October 18th. After allowing just one sack in his three years of service at Northwest, Wong was drafted 75th overall by the Houston Texans. Juan served from 1999 to the 2002 season, and he'll join the 12 other Northwest alums in the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. It was a busy week for the volleyball team as they traveled to Hayes, Kansas, and Kearney, Nebraska. When they played Fort Hayes, it was Avery Kemp's show as she led the charge with 13 kills and three blocks. It was a 3-0 sweep of the Tigers. With that very important win, the Bearcats moved to a 4-3 record in MIAA play. The Bearcats had a total of 47 kills and hit for a 268 percentage on the afternoon. Heading into Saturday's action, it was all about the 16-1 Nebraska Kearney Lopers. However, the Bearcats were unable to stop the momentum as the afternoon got away from them. After sweeping the Fort Hayes Tigers the day before, it was Northwest's turn to get swept, falling to Nebraska Kearney. The Bearcats just couldn't get any momentum going as the team hit for a negative 016 percentage while notching 24 kills for the day. On the bright side, Kyle Lundring recorded 19 digs while Ella Caffrey added 20 assists. 
The duo of Caffrey and Lungring is one of Northwest's successful student-athlete duos. We're going to take one final break before the end of this episode of Bearcat Update. Stay tuned to watch as I head to the hardwood this week. While you're in the break, make sure to drop a score prediction for the Bearcats' next game against Missouri Western. And as always, the winner and the closest one will get a shout out. And coming up next here, I'll have my interview with our new guest here on Who's Next on the X right after this quick break. Tell day, we're on in 20. Good morning. Good morning. Well, a lot of us do, you know, but maybe this might be your opportunity for that. Yeah. Who's Next on the X? Welcome back to Bearcat Update. Last week I went digital, but this week I went to the hardwood and took on the women's basketball team. With just a month remaining before the season tips off, Coach Austin Meyer felt it necessary to give the girls a shot of confidence as they look to improve on a 15-15 and record of last year. Enough waiting, let's head into the gym. This week for Beyond Game Day, I'm taking on the women's basketball team, doing a few ball handling drills, playing a 1v1, and seeing if I can even hit a free throw. Let's see what I can do. Y'all already know the drill. First, we're going to take a look at the work that these ladies put in to prepare for game day. With the beginning of the season a little over a month away, practice is starting to gear more towards getting into game mode and condition. Practice was focused around game-like situations, but keeping things fun and competitive at the same time. These girls were looking in tip-top shape already, so I knew it was going to be a tough one for me to keep up. So we're going to go ahead and jump into testing my ball handling, free throws, and 1v1 abilities. This is what the ball handling is supposed to look like. This is what I made it look like. Now for the free throws. Two. Oh. I feel bad. She's just gonna end up chasing all the missed balls that, that I have. I feel like I should have to do hey. that for everyone. <laughs> Let's hop into 1v1. Think fast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Now I'm going bold. Oh. oh. I should probably go get the rebound. Because <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Okay, I got a crowd going right now. As you can tell, I was atrocious, and Lindsay eventually let me attempt to make a shot. See if I can drive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I got a crowd. <laughs> there we go. 
I'm gonna I'm I'm take a little bit of a breather right here. So that was an adventure right there. Obviously I couldn't make a shot whenever it mattered, uh, but I gotta ask, do you think that the average person could compete with college basketball players? I'm afraid not. Why no. not? I just, the game moves pretty fast. You gotta, your skills have to be good. You gotta be ready for everything. You gotta be focused and it just takes a lot. So I don't think so. But after my performance today, did I make the team? I'm afraid not. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think I think you got to work on your shot a little bit okay. more, and then and then maybe. Okay. We so can reevaluate. There was a maybe in there. I'll try out <laughs> next year. Let's reevaluate. Thank you guys for tuning in to Beyond Game Day. I'll see y'all next week. As the great Shaquille O'Neal said, our defense is like the Pythagorean theorem. There is no answer. But it appears that Lindsay studied up on algebra. She had answers for all of my offensive skill sets. That's all the time we have for Bearcat Update. I'm your host, Jason Holland, and you're watching Bearcat Update, the provider of complete coverage of Northwest sports. We post a new episode every Monday at 6 p.m., and you can find us on YouTube at KNWT TV. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, as always, to be the first to know when we post new videos. As well as Bearcat Update, you can watch all of KNWT TV's other content. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week.